Question about conditioning from a pro player's perspective. Do you slash other pro players have intentional tests that you use when playing someone new to try to and collect data on their reaction habits, like a conditioned flowchart, or are you interested on uh, focusing on playing safe, neutral, and getting data observationally? I imagine there is a combo of both, but wondering if at high level the process is more intentional or observational. Yeah, so what you should be doing for conditioning is you should have a really well-established flowchart. You absolutely need to have a good flowchart for safe, effective gameplay. The term flowchart tends to have like a negative connotation because people often use it in association with bad flowcharts. Like the Ken flowchart has been a meme where all results always point towards doing OD EX uppercut in every single situation. But yes, you want a flowchart. You want a stable type of gameplay that is for the most part safe or apply certain offensive actions and then you see how your opponent reacts to them especially if you have no information about the opponent going into it now a lot of people i play at my level i know who they are like i probably have played them before and i have some intel on their play style and their habits the conditioning and the understanding of their habits might influence how i play during that match a lot more but if it's a brand new opponent and i have no frame of reference for their skill level their knowledge of a matchup etc you're gonna have to play with a pretty safe flowchart and go from there. I definitely have certain offensive sequences that I have can that I go for against everybody. And then if you tend to do certain counters, I might do something else. So for example, if I do this, I get a safe jump here. If I notice that on wake up, you tend to do a lot of parries, for example. So this does set up a safe jump, but if they wake up with frame perfect parry, I lose my safe jump timing. If I notice that you do a lot of parries on a wake up and are fishing, especially on jump ins for parries, I'll stop doing the jump in and I'll just do empty jump throw. Now empty jump throw does lose the buttons and it does lose to mashing and things of that nature. If they do a reversal, I'll get hit. But if you are pairing it every time, I will absolutely go into a throw because I notice that you're, you know, a, a, a parry panda. But what are we going to use here? Parry Andy? Parry Panda. You go for parry too much, I'm going to do that. So I think understanding people's parry habits is really big in this game. Another mini game that I do with JP, you can probably find something with your own character to do as well. Fierce Punch to Fireball, you know, super common option for, for JP. There's a gap though, and people like to parry this gap because, you know, they don't want to lose drive meter just by blocking the fireball. And if they get a perfect parry, they can potentially drive rush in or move after and try to, you know, take their turn back. But if I notice that you're parrying this every single time, I might instead do feints, which will make you waste your drive meter and have your drive meter deplete. And if I notice that you just tap parry and aren't drive rush canceling it, I'll then do this. I'll, I'll drive rush up and throw you. That's a punish counter. Now, not only did I take away a lot of your drive meter, I also got a big chunk of damage as well. So once I notice your parry habits, I'll do that. The thing is, uh, defensively, you could also counter this. So if the dummy goes for that, see, I can, I can actually parry and then drive rush. So if the dummy was trying to do that sequence I just previously showed, they would get punished. If I keep doing this fierce punch to fireball, they will eventually parry because they don't want to keep eating drive meter. Uh, damage and if they don't parry they'll just take more drive meter damage and once they start parrying I can mix in this option or I can sit there and wait and see if they try to drive rush at me in return so definitely like a real canned conditioning sequence with JP that I absolutely apply in real matches and so yeah there's a lot of these types of techniques in the game and it's part of your your default flow chart and then you deviate based on how people respond to that or you use uh, information from past experiences with certain players to inform how you want to approach them in that setting